orange chicken is, I think my soulmate. When did I become such a blackie? Rain and petals eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. You are a disrespectful piece Hey Quarles, welcome to another Amber Lynn video. This one covers a few of her videos so that I can catch up a bit faster. There's some pretty messy and infuriating moments from Amber in this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you do, please consider subscribing. We would love to have you. There's a Discord server for this channel linked in the description and pinned comment if you'd like to come chat or hang out. Feel free to leave me a comment with your thoughts or feedback below. I respond to all of you. Thank you, and let's get into the video. This video. I'm just gonna give a summary. She tells us she doesn't fake weigh-ins, and she talks about how she emotionally ate for part of the day, and she's mad at herself. Those are the most important parts. Next video. We'll actually go through this one because it sounds saucy. January 13th weigh-in. 510.0 pounds. She talks about the cold weather and going out with her mom and grandma again. Okay, so we're about to go into this place called Big Box. It's just like a bunch of Amazon stuff that was never delivered. It's a bin store. Let's go look. Yeah, that's exactly what she needs. A cheap bin store where she has no self-control and can create a whole new hoard aside from the one she already has. Talks about what her mom got. So I saw this icon cinema and I was like, what is that? Is that where all Amberlynn Reed's videos are performed? Get it? Haha. <laughs> She's such an icon, guys. When I'm her age, I want to be able to destroy people's cars with nothing but my body weight alone and be able to eat more than 10,000 calories in one sitting and be abusive to all my animals, friends, and girlfriends, and... January 14th weigh in. 509.6 pounds. 509.6. I was hoping for a bigger loss because I feel like I barely ate anything yesterday, but you know what? I'll take it. What would she do if she didn't take it? Have another binge day? She acts so entitled to having more weight loss. Oh my god, I only lost a single pound instead of five after eating almost nothing yesterday but binging for three days before that. I should have lost more weight than that. What the hell, life? For someone who has cared almost only about food for 10 years now, you'd think she'd understand how it works by now. So tomorrow is week two weigh in to see how much I officially lost. So this can go, can go like any way. I could do good today and lose more weight or tonight, which is usually nighttime where I slip up and do bad. I could do really bad and gain a few pounds overnight and then not lose anything. That would suck big time, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that that won't happen. She acts as if she has no control over it. Somehow, she finds a way to completely separate herself from the responsibility of what she is putting into her body. She makes it sound like someone is force-feeding her. I'm hopeful that it won't happen. Don't be hopeful it doesn't happen. Make sure it doesn't happen. She is not a bystander in her food habits. She is the food habit. She expects all of her problems to be solved by having no self-control or respect. I don't know who the fuck she thinks is responsible for stopping her from eating. Talks about food and Legos. January 15th weigh in. 507.4 pounds. So this week I am down 5.2. I am so, so proud of that. All right, now let's see her maintain that or even go lower than that. Okay guys, so I went on to Instagram. I told you guys to ask me questions. I figured it could be fun to do some rapid fire questions. So let's get into it. Favorite thing about living in Oklahoma so far? Definitely living on my own. I love living on my own. My rules, I can do whatever I want. Everything is mine. It's like my own little like haven, sanctuary. I like doing things on my time. And I don't know, just something about it is just so freeing. And I never expected to love it this much, but I really do. What she loves about living alone as she lists off every home situation she forced her exes into. She can do whatever she wants. Her rules, everything is hers. So basically, everything is the same besides having a servant to boss around and verbally abuse. When will you be ready for a relationship? As soon as someone steps into her trap, she's waiting. Honestly, I don't know because I kind of like the single life. Of course, there is things that I miss about being in a relationship, but I honestly think it's just like I'm missing those things with my ex. We don't have to get into like detail, but there are just like a lot of things that I miss with her specifically. Sure, 
that's totally why Amber was willing to jump straight into a new relationship with a girl she knew online for two days right after her and Feline broke up. And that's why she's been hinting at a possible new relationship in her new videos only a month after saying this. What are your thoughts on sending nudes? So honestly, that is something that um, I low-key do. But I only do it if I'm really connected with someone, we're really into each other, I trust them, and they have to like ask for it because I'm sorry, but unsolicited, no. So she's actively sexting multiple people, isn't looking for a relationship, and still wants her ex back. Okay. But if you two are vibing and they're like, hey, you want to send over like a, a titty pic? <laughs> but you have to be really special because I don't just be sending those out to anybody. Like you have to be a special girly pop, okay? But I don't see anything wrong with it. Like if two people are into each other, go for it. Basically, she'll send them to any girl that talks to her on Instagram for more than an hour. I'm not saying this to shame her. She's an adult. She can do whatever she wants as long as it's not hurting anyone. I'm just calling out the fact that she seems very naive. She suggests that she's been sending pics to multiple people and we know our girl doesn't have many close friends, meaning she's probably sending them to people she hasn't known for very long but thinks she knows, and they could be taking advantage of her. She just needs to be careful. So the last question I'm gonna do is, how do you feel about Becky talking about you again? So honestly, I find it a little weird, only because she was the one who initially said, keep my name out your mouth or the law is gonna get involved. And then I think it was a few months later, I brought up the law just to remind her that that was initially what she wanted. It was my way of agreeing. Amber is such a manipulator. Becky brought up the law because Amber wouldn't stop talking about Becky and it made them uncomfortable. Amber didn't bring up the law to agree with Becky, she brought up the law to silence them because she knew Becky would talk about how abusive she was. Amber can't run her fucking mouth for weeks before being called on it and then not expect Becky to eventually speak up to share their side. It's okay for Amber to run her mouth and talk shit, but as soon as someone else does it, she shuts them down immediately. But like now she's talking about me, I don't know. Share your story, share your truth, share what you think is your truth. Share what you think is your truth. I'm trying to think of ways to explain how wrong that statement is to say to someone in such a condescending way. Whether what Becky is saying aligns with Amber's truth or not, that is not the point here. The point is that either way, whether Amber meant to or not, she made Becky feel mentally and verbally abused. I don't know about you guys, but if someone comes to me that I thought I was cool with and they tell me genuinely that I hurt them and that they feel abused by me, I'm going to be horrified and I'm going to apologize. I will fully admit I still get defensive sometimes. I'm not perfect either and I need to work on it, but the fact that Amber at age 33 doesn't see anything wrong with what she's saying? Another thing I'd like to discuss. I know that sometimes when people approach you and are trying to convince you you've wronged them, sometimes that person may be trying to guilt trip or manipulate you, but I also think people are able to recognize when that's the case because you know the history behind your relationship with that person. Also, in this case, we can see how broken Becky looked on their first video back to YouTube. That wasn't manipulation, it was aching. What I will agree with to an extent is that Becky continuing to bring up Amber is a bit odd. I do understand if you hold a different opinion though. I feel like Becky needs to move on and do their own thing like they've been talking about instead of playing off of the role as Amber's ex. Amber's about to say some more shit to piss me off, so let's continue. I, I don't know what else to say about it at this point because I'm just not really into this whole let's talk shit about our ex for money. I, I personally am not going to be doing it. I did go against my morals at the time when Destiny started saying all those things about me and I went on live stream and then started doing the same. I was in a very bad headspace at the time, but I'm not going to let that be an excuse because even if I was in a bad one now, I still wouldn't let myself come to that type of energy because I'm not going to do it. Again, she says she's not going to use it as an excuse as she uses it as an excuse and doesn't apologize. Also, if we want to bring up talking about exes, who has Amber been talking about every video for the past 7 plus months after her breakup? Oh, yeah, her ex. Even after her ex asked her to leave her alone and stop talking about her multiple times. Amber is so morally correct for that. She can do whatever she wants and I'm not going to say a damn thing because I just wish her nothing but healing, happiness, health, success, all the good things in the world. But it is a little confusing because she was the one who initially brought up the law. 
It's not confusing, Amber knows what she's doing, and she's trying to manipulate the few people that somehow still believe her. Amber has a much larger audience than Becky and knew for a fact that her threats could make Becky stop talking more easily. If Amber thought it was so wrong for Becky to bring up the law and is so personally offended by it, why would she be petty and threaten with the law as a response? She loves pretending to be the bigger, better person while being a massive hypocrite and doing all of the things she says are morally wrong. Is it suddenly okay that she did it because she has a bigger platform and multiple mental illnesses that she still isn't seeking proper help for? Boring call. Y'all, I'm not gonna lie to you, the last two days has been so boring. I have been wanting to go outside and walk, but I can't because we are snowed in. I have been able to take Twinkie to the uh, dog park, but that is like literally part of my apartment complex, which I prefer to walk her so we can get like exercise and stuff. Her idea of snowed in is probably three inches of snow on the ground, if that. I would say she could go walk Twinkie in the snow for a little bit, but considering she doesn't know what good shoes are, she probably doesn't have anything to wear to walk in the snow. Sadly, I have not been able to do that, and I've been really, really itching to do the mile walk without Twinkie. I know the next couple of months is just going to be freezing cold. Like, I cannot imagine myself walking in 10 degree weather, 20 degree weather. Like, it's not going to happen. Gym membership. All weather-related problems solved, plus she gets access to even more than just walking and can have someone professional help her step-by-step -step if she pays extra, which we know she can afford. We know she hates listening to professionals, though, because she knows better, and we know she doesn't actually want to exercise. Once it starts getting up, like, the 50s and 60s, that's, like, perfect walking weather, in my opinion. And I'm just like, I need that weather because I want to walk so bad. Like, who is she? Like, I want to go walk a mile? Like, what? She could even afford a treadmill for her own apartment, and I also wouldn't be surprised if her apartment has its own gym, especially if it has its own dog park. Sure, it's not the same as walking around and having a view outside, but if she's supposedly so desperate to get movement, isn't walking inside better than nothing? But yeah, like, a lot of people enjoy the snow, and I'm just not that girly. Like, I used to love the snow, but now I just feel trapped, honestly, because, like, I don't own a single pair of shoes that is, like, ice approved or snow approved. So when I do go out there, it's like, it hurts my feet. Oh my god. It's just hard to find shoes that, like, work for me. Called it. And hmm, I wonder why. Maybe holding up legs the circumference of watermelons on the edge of tennis shoes isn't very comfortable. Maybe that's something to work on. That's the end of that video, let's go to the next. I think I'm just gonna run through this next video quickly. A lot of parts of it are repetitive. On one of her days, she gains weight and laughs about it and moves on like it's no big deal because she's delusional. There's the usual boring chores, haul, and Legos. January 18th weigh-in. 512.2 pounds. She talks about how she was eating hot Cheetos and ramen and Reese's and how instead of crying, she's going to use this as motivation, which we've heard a hundred times before. Looking at her numbers, she basically just undid 11 days of quote-unquote work. January 19th weigh in. 512.4 pounds. Okay, so it was 512.4, which means I gained a little bit off track yesterday. Like, all of these off tracks are definitely a reflection of my mental health. That's something I've definitely noticed. The reflection on her mental health is that when she gains, it makes her upset so she eats more and gains, which makes her upset so she eats more. And it's just a vicious cycle that she probably needs help to get out of, but she refuses to get help. You guys, I really don't want to come on here and do this, but admitting that I'm currently depressed for some reason is hard for me. There's just so much stigma around it and I just, I don't know. I am depressed and I don't know why. I have no reason to be depressed. Other than mental illness, like, I have been, like, denying it. I have been in denial, and I've just noticed the last few days, just that feeling of it coming. I'm just going to read this comment that I feel like responds to this very well. It's weird how she honestly thinks she has nothing to be depressed about. She has a laundry list of health and mental health issues. Can't sit in most chairs, can't drive, can't go to an amusement park, has no friends because she's insufferable, etc. Goral has, like, a bajillion reasons, and she needs to face that. She's so out of touch with reality, it's wild. 
You simply can't fix your problems in life without facing them first. As I looked through, I actually found a couple other comments I agree with too. Don't worry, Amber, we are literally expecting nothing. It's almost like you shouldn't have stopped taking all your antidepressants or something. So weird. There are also other comments that are being tough on her, but overall, they aren't denying her depression. They're just pointing out that she refuses to look at the actual root issues for her depression, and I definitely agree with them. She talks about how she's been feeling okay for a while now, and is sad that she's feeling this way again. January 20th weigh in. 513.8 pounds. So this makes me really sad to even have to write down. I'm not doing that great with my mental health. And that reflects the way that I eat. That is very prominent. Like, I am so glad I started documenting all this down because I have never actually truly witnessed that myself, that when my mental health is really bad, so is my eating. Why does she think her mental health is bad? She refuses to do anything about it, even when right in front of her face, she can see how self-destructive it is. I don't understand her lack of action toward everything in her life. Talks about spending the day with her mom, then this. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna continue the daily weigh-ins. I don't know, I just am like in the weirdest headspace ever, and I don't really know what's happening, but. No one saw that coming. She only made it 20 days. Still more than two weeks though, impressive for Amber. Also, what happened to her being glad that she had documented everything so that she could see how her mental health affected it? I guess that's just out the window. She talks about seasonal depression, talks about TikTok and does a boring haul. She tries something atrocious, I don't even feel like explaining. Oh, by the way, this is also the video where she broke her every other day upload goal. Anyways, I hope that you guys did enjoy this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. That's the end of that video and I think this is where I'll end mine as well. Amber is slipping down her slippery slope once again and has been in her recent videos too, so I'm ready to catch up and see what's up now. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please consider subscribing. We would love to have you. Don't forget, there's a Discord server for this channel linked in the description and pinned comment if you'd like to come chat or hang out. Feel free to leave me a comment with your thoughts or feedback below. I respond to all of you. I hope you have a great day. Bye!